Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you guys today? Good morning, Vasilena, and uh, to everyone who is participating in this webinar. Uh, today, last day of the week. Was it an interesting trading week for you guys? How, how was trading going so far? Let's wait a couple of minutes for the people uh, on YouTube to, to log in. Yeah, it looks like today will be an... <laughs> Vasilena is said, yeah, and looks like today will be another. That's interesting. Uh, most likely focus for today, it's gonna to be on the Japanese yen because of the news announcement about the interest rate we have. And now they are reporting their uh, uh, meetings, minutes meetings. So you will see how the market is gonna, it's gonna react. Although uh, we had major banks announcing their interest rates, uh, Bank of England, the reserve, the Fed, um, the Switzerland, and the Japan, all the four, uh, they, let's say, increase their interest rates. And although the Bank of Switzerland from minus 0 0.75, uh, they took them down to minus 0 0.25. So it's a good improvement. Hopefully, maybe in Europe, we're going to start to see some positive uh, interest rates uh, soon. Who knows? <laughs> maybe some money on, on we're sitting on the bank now. Maybe they're going to start receiving a couple of cents interest rate. <laughs> okay. So, guys, today I was just... Uh, browsing through our YouTube channel. And uh, I saw that we are just a hundred subscribers away from uh, to hit 30,000 subscribers. So I would like to see many likes actually on the on this particular video. Okay. And for those you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you subscribe and also you turn on the notifications so you will never miss any uh any webinar and also it will be interesting to see uh another 100 subscribers so we can hit the 30k subscribers okay also i have you here admirals global if you're using instagram please follow us on instagram and by the way i think it's easier for you guys if i just drop you the the addresses here on both live chats one sec. That's for the Telegram and for the YouTube. I'm sure the people on the YouTube, they know the address, but just please make sure everyone subscribe. Okay. Uh, Padel is asking, morning, how is Marcus Gabel on holidays? Uh, I don't know if Marcus is on holidays. However, if you're not informed, it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I'm taking over the webinars on uh, the, the morning briefing webinars. Um, so that's why you are seeing me here. <laughs> okay. So let's start. Guys, just to make sure we repeat it one more time, this is for a market analysis and educational purposes webinar only. Uh, it doesn't consider any personal advice at all. All the trades I enter and exit uh, live uh, when, it, when I have to do it, it's just based on my personal perspective on how do I see the markets, okay? If you like to enter the same trade, it's absolutely uh, on you. If your rules and everything agree and you according you you manage your risk accordingly okay now 
just very quickly, uh, last Wednesday we had uh, the Fed increasing their interest rates 1.75%. Uh, yesterday we have the Switzerland National Bank from 0. Points, minus 0. 0.75 to minus 0. 0.25. The Bank of England, of course, uh, the nine votes they got confirmed. So 1% became 1.25% increases. Today in the morning, we had the Bank of Japan without any surprises. Most of the times they prefer to keep their interest rates somewhere low for some reason to explain that last time. Okay, so today no more uh, major news announcement. I usually keep uh, on my calendar the major news events because that's the news I just want to be aware of. Uh, but if you are trading just a tip, if you are trading intraday, it's good to have also the medium impact news because if your stop losses are five to 10 pips, um, it's easy to get uh, whipped out from the volatility we created at that stage, okay? So just be mindful of that. And let's go to the charts. charts here. So let's start with the pound US dollar. Now we are on the four hour. Now guys, today I will give you uh, a bit of education uh, really because this is the market condition. Many people, they got confused about the trend. And really today's example, this comes with uh, hours and hours of screening, okay? But I'm here to make sure you're gonna receive all my knowledge and make, make you understand about the market nature a lot. So we know that we want to trade during trends, right? We know that we want to participate when there is an imbalance in the market, when there is a big force on the one side and uh, less force on the other side. So the market, it's not in equilibrium and we want to get into the move with the trend, okay? Because it's higher probability. So what do we see here? We see the market is doing this move to the downside as we described last week then it's pushing higher it creates the swing all over the sudden the market is playing a little bit around here the sellers at this stage they don't push lower and we have a higher high here we have this higher high and then we have this higher low and now the market is putting a higher high Okay, so we can, uh, we can say that if the market is gonna come here, we can try to find our entry to go long and either target this level here, which it match with this uh, pretty, no, it doesn't match, sorry. So it has room to move, okay, somewhere around here, or if you are targeting somewhere around there. Now, and that's how it's a normal play to go with this trade. Also, something interesting in this trade is that if you are using Fibonacci retracements, if you draw your Fibonacci from this swing low to this swing high, you're going to see that here is the 50, 61.8%. Sorry, I have the 55, 50 somewhere like here. Okay. So that's the area of interest. That's the area that there are many orders sitting there to be executed on the downside. And there are also many orders sitting there to be executed for traders who want to get out of losing trades. Okay, so there are many um, buy stop orders here. That's how uh, 
we call them. All right, now, where things are a bit complicated, when we understand the top-down analysis and we do the multi-time frame analysis, as you know, I always start from the weekly charts just to understand, just to map the market. On the weekly chart, do you see an uptrend on this or a downtrend? What do you see here on the weekly chart? Can you please type, guys, this is really important. And I, I promise you, if you understand this, it's going to unlock many issues in your trading, okay, when you are trading your trends. Can you type here, what do you see? If you want to type, please, do you see an uptrend here or a, or a downtrend? What do you see? Come on. Let's participate a little bit. Yeah, weekly is down, downtrend, downtrend. Okay. And that's right, weekly is down. If we go to the daily chart, because after the weekly, we have the daily chart. We're not going to take trades on the weekly because it's too, too, too big the stop loss. So uh, if we're going to put 200 pips and each pip is going to worth one cent, then how much pips, how many pips we need to make in order to make at least five bucks out of a trade? So we prefer to use lower time frames for, ex for entry. So weekly is down. What about the daily? What is the daily doing? Guys, there is no right or wrong answer here. Don't afraid to express your thoughts about the market. Uh, we are not here to, my purpose is not here to be the smart on this, on this group, okay? My purpose here is to transfer 10 years of knowledge and make sure I'm gonna put it in a way that it's gonna be simple and understandable for you so to help you with your executions and with your uh, trade management. But it's important to understand every time you're trading where you are in a big picture. Okay, it is important. And slowly, slowly, we're going to get there. Yeah, it's taking a breath. That's right. So on the daily chart, what do we see here? We see the market, it's coming down. A little bit of mixture here. And then we see this impulse move to the downside. It created a lower low. If you take this lowest reference, it's still a lower low. If you take this lowest low of reference, it's still a lower low. So can you please let me know, daily is down as well. Yeah, many people on the live chat, on the, uh, on the live streaming on YouTube, they are saying it's down absolutely. And also many people, uh, almost everyone, it's saying that it's, it's a downtrend. Also, the daily is down, okay? Now, if we go, we see that the daily is also down. It's, it pulled back around this level. And now it's, it's kind of since the morning, it's just moving down, okay? Do we all see that? Yeah? Now, if we go to the four-hour chart, what do we see here? What trend do we see here? We see higher highs. Guys, what is this trend? It's uptrend, correct? So the big picture, it shows a downtrend, but the four hour, it shows an uptrend. Am I the only one who is confused here? <laughs> I'm joking, okay. so. What can we do in this occasion? Here we have a disagreement of time frames. So if you are solely, guys, I know that today we're not going to go through, and I'm telling you, we're not going to go through all the pairs in the market like we used to do every uh, morning briefing session. But trust me, what you, what you are learning now it's crucial for your trend trading. It's absolutely crucial. And it's not only for your trend trading, also if you're trading intraday. So uh, I want to sacrifice a little bit more time to help you understand this concept here. So we see that the four-hour chart, 
it broke the downtrend structure and it's in an uptrend. So we can say that the four hour chart is in a correction phase of the higher time frame. Or if you are trading solidly on the four hour chart, you're gonna see this as an uptrend. Now, what can possibly happen? The market can come to these lows here. And then in this time frame, we can see another impulse move. There is the scenario that this four hour chart can create a new trend in the market. And the market, is, you're gonna see this one as the beginning of a, a new trend, uptrend on the daily and on the weekly chart. But also you can see this as a correction of the weekly chart and the daily chart. And you can try to find double tops here. Double top, it's a reversal pattern for those they don't know. You can find a double top rejection here with a pin bar, whatever you enter, you put your stop and you target here around three to one. Or you can wait for this trend line to break. Let me just draw it better for you guys. You can wait for this trend line support to break a retest here and you enter short to go with align with the daily and the weekly chart. However, at this current stage, the only information, then you're gonna ask me, okay, Theo, so what, what's the answer? What shall, what have we do here? What shall we do here? Guys, in trading, as we said, it's a probability game. It's a probability business, okay? It's a probable outcome, every single event. So, because the higher time frames, they do not agree with the lower time frames, there is no right or wrong answer. It's your perception of what do you see as a trend here. If you see this as an, an uptrend, the only thing I can advise you from experience, advise you in terms of uh, chart reading, not on how much to trade or where to enter the trades here. It's that if you see this as a, as a new uptrend, because the higher time frames they don't agree with this uptrend, just make sure you don't go full on with your risk. If you are risking 2%, 3%, whatever you are risking, just manage your risks accordingly because maybe it's it's gonna just push lower, okay? And it's not gonna create a new trend. But if this is gonna be the new trend in the market, an uptrend, then of course it's like you get in, into a very, very early stage, okay? Because we don't have alignment between the higher time frames, it's better if you're gonna take this to the upside, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It me it, it just try to manage your risk uh, because it, it's what we call low probability trade. Okay, it's as simple as this. Yes, you can go long. Uh, Morlin is asking. So for our we should go long when it breaks the line. You can go long. Which line? Sorry. You say about a line, but which line? There are so many lines here. Let me get rid of some lines. You can go long if you are, first, if you are trading from moving averages. You can go long from moving averages if you find your price action. How I personally would enter the market if, if I will take this trade, if the price is going to pull back somewhere here, because now, because of the lack of uh, confirmation of the higher time frame, I want to have many confluence factors before I enter this trade. I would like the market to push a little bit lower to come to some Fibonacci levels, and then to find a strong price action, which for me, it's a pin bar, like this pin bar here, it's a strong price action, like this pin bar here, it's a strong price action for me, 
or a bullish engulfing like this, like this bullish engulfing here, this one here to enter, to enter, or this bullish engulfing here to enter, to enter the trades. Okay, so that's how I was about to play. And again, uh, something else you have to be aware both Bank of England and both the Fed, they increase their interest rates. So which one is going to move faster than the other? That's another uh, question in this particular pair. So guys, I'm just trying to make your mind think in a, in a more wider frame, okay, at this stage. So, and I'm sure regardless if you just start trading, if you are a beginner, if you just um open your account with us doesn't matter or if you are trading for one month three months five months one year doesn't matter uh it's information we have to understand um as good as possible okay yes i will explain pattern what it's a pin bar let me just go through we have a lot of questions a lot of comments here on the live chat uh, the market will either go up and break a bullish, will fail continue. Yeah, uh, Shang Teddy, that's true. It's just a smaller correction. Yes, Andre, that's correct. Yep, Rockets, yeah, Bremer downtrend. Yep, yep, Andre, what moving averages are you using? This is the nine and the 21 moving average. I have with blue the nine and the 21 moving average. and. I will explain you another time, how do I see the moving averages, okay? I'm not trading solely on the moving averages. I use them as trend filters and I will spend some time, another, another session to explain you that. Set the resistance at the daily top and see if the four hour break, is that exactly correct? Uh, that's from Swaghetti. Yes, Andre, yeah, we said that. Swaghetti, another question. Wouldn't it be better to have a short position set at that point with a tight stop loss? At which point to have to have a, a sell here? Do you mean to have a sell somewhere here with a small stop loss? That's what you mean, Swaghetti, so I can understand. Slightly below the four hour top. Ah, slightly below the four hour top. Okay, so somewhere here, maybe you are referring. So if that's the guys, the markets around the tops and the bottoms, they have the tendency to have to have an increased volatility because of the orders are sitting at this. There are people they enter short here, so they have their stops above this uh above these areas they are short so their stops are here uh if they bought uh let's say here they have their stops somewhere there so at this point markets you see this all the time most of the times you're going to see these um tails left behind that's because of the of the different beliefs of traders. So they just, some they enter short on the time frame, some they enter long. So whoever is, uh, wherever it's the majority of the volume, that's where the market's gonna move. Okay. All righty. So we have uh, seven minutes, eight minutes left. Let's go through some other pairs. Uh, Euro USD, we are on the daily chart. We see that the market it came retest this low point. Now it pushed back. If you go to the four hour, you most likely gonna have the same scenario, similar scenario like the uh, pound USD. We have here a higher high. The market is pushing here, trying to push low. We will see what will happen because the daily chart, you see it's still on a downtrend, but 
we bounced through a strong support where previously the market just uh, pushed higher a lot. Now we reached the support. If these buyers who entered here, they are still adding and adding to their positions, it means the market has to push higher like happened previously. If not, we're gonna see uh, the market selling off. However, if you are watching uh, every time my webinars, you should understand by now that this market, it stopped trending and is ranging because it didn't broke through the previous low and it bounced back. Now we are in the middle of this range. So be careful if you wanna trade uh, in the middle of the range. Padel, I will answer your question the last minute. Okay, uh, Padel is asking, please for the last time, kindly explain what exactly a pin bar is. Don't worry, Padel, it's not gonna be for the last time. I'm gonna explain it again and again and again, and it's nothing wrong with that here. Guys, again, here, uh, my purpose is to serve you and make sure your trading knowledge, it's gonna be uh, increased and increased. And I want to add value to your trading uh, as much as possible, okay? So we're gonna explain the price action many times. Aussie USD, similar scenario. We are on the daily chart. It put this massive impulse move. It retraced 100% all its moves. So we consider that we are in the range now. However, maybe this it's gonna push lower. We don't know because the range um, it's it's a range. The only thing we know for sure is that we have these defined uh, lines. And if you recall, I prefer to enter trades only with price action, only from the lines, if I'm gonna trade the range. But it, it's nothing similar with this market here, guys. You see the market was making higher highs. Now it put a lower low here. We don't say we are in the range here because the market didn't sell off up to here and it stopped. It's just make a lower low here and we see a push higher. So we have a bearish engulfing. That was a lucrative trade for the, if some people, they took this trade as well. Okay, so that's what we define as a trend and that's what we define as a range. When the market is gonna start between the two lines here. Let's move to the next one. New Zealand USD, exactly same scenario. You can see we have our support here. We have the resistance here and the market is just bouncing around. Also, you will notice that here as well, the market is making higher highs on this four hour chart. However, we don't know if this is gonna be the beginning of a trend, a major trend and the daily it's going to put a higher high so on the weekly so if you're going to start trading in the upside from here just manage your risk accordingly and then if you see another impulse move here and you believe that the market has room to come at least up to here then you can add to your trade of course okay just don't be greedy and be mindful when you are trading on one time frame uh, and the trend is not agree with the other time frames. So let's see the USD Japanese yen because I believe many people you are still on this trade. If you used to follow Marcus, I think he took this trade somewhere here and then he maybe add to the positions. I don't know what he done, uh, but if you are still on this trade, we see that the market is made a higher high, a normal pullback, okay, a normal pullback here. If you're gonna put the MACD, you will see that there is a divergence here on the MACD, if you are using MACD. Uh, if you are not using MACD, please don't go to try and find the MACD and to do 
random stuff, keep to your trading because guys, you are so many people and appreciate it, but I don't know which one, uh, what is trading. I will find out slowly, slowly. We need some time, uh, but I'm just saying, if you are trading divergence, we changed the phase. So the market came up to here, retest this last swing. That's kind of textbook trade break higher high retest it here on the four hour what do we have on the four hour and you see the four hour here a disagreement the market is moving okay a little bit chubby here as we said and the market here puts lower low but is this lower low a reason to start shorting here and trying to push lower or <clears throat> is this uh, a normal consequence of every uptrend to retrace. So on the lower time frame, we're going to see a different trend against the prevailing trend. Okay, and that's what's happening here. If the market comes here and it's uh, put a nice pin bar, which I will explain now what is pin bar. Okay, I will most likely short it from here. Uh, with just one to one maximum to two one okay but i have to see first when it comes here if it comes there if it will apply my rewards so let's explain what is a pin bar now a pin bar is when the market is moving the market moves in an uptrend okay or in a downtrend doesn't matter. I'm going to just take this uh, as an, an uptrend example. All right. And the market pulls, pulls back. And at some point around this level here, because the trend is up, the buy the sellers they open here the sellers are pushing the price lower and during the same session if it's a four hour chart during this four hour the buyers they start buying and they manage to close uh the to close this four hour let's say it's a four hour chart to close this four hour session uh, leaving behind a tail that's what we call a pin bar when we see a significantly longer tail compared to the body we call it as a pin bar and a pin bar it's a powerful rejection of the market at uh, at one single session so here it's a pin bar it rejected the market during the uptrend and the sellers they tried to push the price lower but the buyers they picked up here is a pin bar if it's a valid pin bar or not, it's something we're going to discuss in another in another uh, webinar. But this pin bar is not valid because it's against the prevailing trend. This pin bar is not valid because it's against the prevailing trend. It's not valid for me as a trader. If traders they try to pick the tops, they're going to see them as valid. Okay, both of them they lost. We trade with a trend for higher probability trades this pin bar here is valid it's with a trend so when the body is significantly smaller than the tail we have a pin bar this one here is not a pin bar because the tail is very small relatively to the body this one here uh let's find another one this one here is not a pin bar because the body and the tail it's similarly the same size 
this one, this one here, it's a pin bar. We have a small body relatively to the tail. Yes, they call them a hammer as well. Uh, Vasilena, yes, they call them hammers like this, or they call them shooting stars if they're gonna be from the resistance. So these candlestick patterns, there are names for those you don't know, uh, different variation. The most important thing is the outcome out of this setup. We see the tail shows rejection, and that's what we have to focus on to understand. In an uptrend, if we see a pin bar, it means the buyers, they start buying, so they reject all the selling effort uh, at that particular session. So it's a strong price action, indicates that the buyers are in control in an uptrend, okay? So guys, it was, uh, it was great to have this session with you today, really. Regardless, we didn't go through all these uh, pairs like we used to do every, every session. I believe today's uh, was really important for you guys to understand the difference, the, the time frame agreement. Oh, sorry. I think I stopped it. Sorry, that was my mistake. Uh, the time frame agreement between uh, between different time frames. Okay. The point is to be careful with your risk management when you are trading in this uh, trading environment. All right. I hope you gain so much value out of these sessions. Really, I would like to see some thumbs up on the video. Uh, so it gives me also the understanding that it really adds value to your, uh, to your trading journey. And also please make sure you subscribe on the channels, uh, especially on YouTube to go to the, finally to the 30K subscribers. Uh, just for your information on Monday, I will host a webinar at six o'clock Cyprus time. Yes, six o'clock until seven o'clock. It's one hour duration. And I will explain everything about Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands. If you haven't, if you want to learn about this powerful strategy, uh, I used to trade it for years and years and years and years. On Monday at 6 p.m., please go to the website, to our website. Let me... Uh, Monday 6, yes, please go to the website and you're gonna just... Uh, you're gonna just sign up for the webinar, okay? Or... If you're not going to be around, I will see you on Monday morning uh, on the market updates at 9.30. So I wish you to have a good trading. Be careful with your risk. Today is the Friday. It's Friday. It's the last Friday of the, it's the last day of the week. So uh, markets, maybe they're going to go also a bit random today to digest all the news from uh, Monday until today. So. Have a nice weekend and I will see you on Monday. Thank you so much. Bye everyone.